So let's look at this feed cost per liter on the P&L, and uh, I want to try and get this down to what you might have on a grazing dairy. So the definition of feed cost per liter is milking and dry accrual consumption using market values for feeds. Again, that is a mouthful. It sounds very simple to say it. Actually coming up with that number is not quite so simple. So accrual usage or accrual consumption means what the cows consumed every month. So we'd have to have inventories monthly. We could have a feeding software program that determines it. We, we got purchases coming on the dairy of, of feeds that we buy. There's a variety of ways we can come up with consumption, but we've got to use it for market values for feeds. Okay, for example, let's say you grow cereal silage and that cereal silage costs $30 per ton for you to grow. And on your P&L you report fertilizer and chemicals and harvest costs and all that and all that whittles down to about a $30 per ton cost. Let's say the market for that silage was $50 per ton. That means the farm is making about a $20 margin on that crop. Good thing for the farm. The last thing we want to do is show $30 on our dairy and let the farm subsidize the dairy. There's many dairies in the U.S., not today, but a year or two ago when our margins were tight, that the dairy was actually losing money if you put in market values for feeds, which tells you what? It tells you that running feed through those cows is a losing proposition. The dairy would make more money selling all the cows and farming only. That's a very sobering thought, to go through all that work all year milking cows to lose money in the process. And the worst thing is the dairies don't know it. Why don't they know it? Because they report this $30.00 and they look at the bottom line P&L and say, we made money, our dairy's fine, we make a lot of money, but we're profitable. And they were blinded by the fact that their dairy was losing money, their farm was doing well. So if you know that fact, it doesn't mean that you have to sell the dairy and you have to sell the cows, it means we've got to get better. Nothing motivates a business owner more than red ink at the bottom of a P&L to say, we are losing money. Our business is not financially efficient. We <laughs> must make structural changes to our business and get better or eventually we're going to go broke. Because this margin right here in farming, in my country, this comes and goes. And we've had a very good margin in farming in the last two or three years. Prior to that, we had no margin or even a negative margin. And we got to make sure that our, again, I'll state this again, our dairy operation is a standalone business that can profit on its own at market values. If it doesn't or it can't, you don't have a good business model. And long term in your market, that's a risky model that's destined to fail eventually if you don't figure out a way to fix that, okay? So milking and dry or cruel consumption using market values. There's no heifers in there. Yes? Sorry to interrupt. No, no, please. Before you leave, leave that point. Yep. Each year will vary for all those things too. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't sell off your dairy and then find the next year that your feed growing made a loss. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, so his point is that you wouldn't look at that one year and say, gosh, my dairy lost money one year out of sell the cows. Absolutely not. It's a long-term look at your business um, and a long-term look at where you've been. So you definitely don't react one year uh, that this is not doing well. You certainly want your overall business to make money, but if you find that consistently your dairy's not making money, then again, you, you've got a chance to do something about it while your overall business is still making money. Because that farming advantage is not probably not going to stay there long term. It's going to come and go. Okay. Likewise, uh, if I had come here 10 years ago and was describing an American situation, I would, I would say that, man, American dairymen don't want to farm at all. Farming was a losing proposition. We had a negative margin here for the most part on growing feed. Most, most dairies could buy feed cheaper than they could grow it. So I was like, why be into farming? It's a bad business. We're losing margin there. Now that's completely changed. Now it's a great business. So we tend to have dairies that more have both. But we need to look at them both separately. So we need to look at milking and dry cows only. As I said earlier, no heifers in this number. The only heifers that we would include would be springing heifers. So back to the initial question is, if you were buying all your heifers, would you still have this expense? And if you were buying all your heifers, you would probably still bring your heifers in at 240 days carried calf for 250. You wouldn't bring them in as fresh heifers, you'd probably bring them in as springers. And it's not worth the accounting effort to separate feed costs on springy heifers and springy adult cows. So usually we have dry cows, springy heifers, and milking cows are the total feed costs. A part of that concept is that if your dairy had 500 cows and you added 100 milking cows to your dairy in the next year, what would also have to come along with those 100 milking cows? 
a few dry cows, right? You'd probably have 10 dry cows or so that would eventually also show up with those 500 milking cows. You would not have to have 10 heifers show up. You could go out and buy those surplus heifers. So each milking cow has to support a portion of dry cows. Her feed costs have to be uh, supporting a portion of dry cows. So to do that, so we got to consider all sources of feed on a dairy, not just, uh, not just purchase feed. So for a grazing dairy, this is an interesting proposition about how do you quantify that? So if we were to go to a grazing dairy, again, this is kind of how, how I look at it in the U.S. and when I was here last year in Australia, how I kind of thought it made sense to look at was uh, uh, to looking at of all the things that go into feed on your dairy if you're grazing, I would add things like fencing, okay, because if your cows were inside in a free stall, you wouldn't have uh, whatever fencing expenses you have, fertilizer, seed, chemicals, whatever expenses you have to maintain your pasture. Clipping, if you do that, okay? All those expenses on your pasture, all right? Plus, you would have your grain cost, okay? Plus, you would have your grain cost, whatever grain you buy. Then the last one that I think you have to add is land opportunity cost, okay? you probably have a significant amount of capital invested in that land and if you're getting no return on that capital I think you're fooling yourself in your business and you're essentially using your capital free to generate income from your dairy. So what you put in that is kind of up to you. I think you ought to put a, a 5% to me is a reasonable place to be to say hey I want a 5% return on that land um, and include that as a feed cost. All right? So take the value of your land, add 5% to it. That Again, this is gonna change the picture for a lot of people and make you look at it differently, all right? So I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna use all my farming costs that went into it, my grain costs, and then if I have any stored forage at market value, whoops, stored forage at market. You probably can't read any of my chicken scratch here. I, this actually isn't Chinese, this is actually English I'm writing, okay? So stored, so we have our stored forage, our land opportunity cost, our grain cost, then all those costs of maintaining our pastures and keeping our pastures going. Sum all that together, put that in one big bucket, divided by liters of milk you shipped, and I think that's a pretty good, probably as good a way as any to get feed costs. But to separate the heifers out is the other part of this that I want to hit. So uh, most people don't go to all the effort to figure out exactly what it costs, of what they're spending on heifer feed. What most people do is they come up with a big number for all the feed on a dairy. I'll use big round numbers here, just say $100,000 in feed costs over a, a month or a year or whatever period of time. Let's say this is the total feed that we fed on the dairy. Okay? Then we would go in and estimate how much we think our heifers consumed. So we might say, ah, eh, we think feed costs are $1.50 a day. That's what we typically use in my country. $1.50 a day times our heifer inventory, times the number of days on feed, and we get that total value of money. Let's say that is $20,000 for heifers. Okay, that makes our milking cow feed cost $80,000. Okay, we're going to count for this $20,000 in replacement cost when we get there. All right, but it's not going to be part of feed cost. So you don't have to go home and write down every bag of mineral that went to heifers, all the feed, separate the TMR, write down costs, keep track of pasture usage and all that. It's not worth all that effort. You're going to get 95% of the right answer if you just measure the total feed your dairy consumed over a month's period of time, subtract off your best guess as to what the heifers consume, the difference is milk cow feed. Okay? So that pasture thing, I think the opportunity cost is, is uh, in my view, seems the best way. Does anybody have a different or a better way of doing that? Or any thoughts on that? I guess that must be the way, huh? Okay. All right. So, uh, um, again, our limitations in this, make sure we uh, are we're ignoring milk income and certainly don't benchmark this number to other herds unless you're sure how it's calculated. Hopefully you've seen all the ways that this can be miscalculated, misinterpreted. And I, I literally see accountants in the U.S. lining up herds side by side on feed cost per, per liter and saying, gee, herd A is better than herd uh, C and D and making terribly inappropriate conclusions and people are going out and changing their ration for uh, no good reason whatsoever. Okay, so let's say, uh, what time is lunch going to come? Was it 12? 
12.15, so we got five more minutes. So I might as well use it up, right? Might as well keep talking. All right, income over fee costs. Let's uh, hit this one more time. We'll finish up with this and one more slide. So this math is very easy. I've been through it a couple times. There's not much to it. So we get uh, the milk a cow produces, the milk price, the fee cost. That margin, okay, that margin in between is what we're after. That margin you ought to calculate every day but, or, or every month on your dairy. But what's the problem of this as a metric on your dairy month after month after month? If we calculate the actual income over fee cost, and you say in, in June of 2014, my income over fee cost was a dollar per day better than June of 2013. What are the possible reasons why it might be better? Yep. Weather? Yep. Which would impact our feed, okay? Would impact our cow performance? Milk price. Milk price. Feed price, right? So the important thing is that we've got cow factors <laughs> impacting this number and we've got market factors right and I think you want to clearly distinguish cow factors from market factors because there's a couple questions to be asked here my root question when I run this number is are my cows performing differently than the year before I think this is probably one of the best estimates of how good a job you're doing at utilizing grass on your dairy if you can generate more income over fee cost dollars from your dairy you're getting more out of your grass than you did the year before so to remove the market factors, I don't want to say I'm better just because milk price is better or I'm better because feed costs are lower. I want to know I'm better because my cows perform better given the grass I've got. So what I want to do is remove the market from this equation.